And now another no-brainer money-saving tip from Progressive. That doesn't sound good. Paper shredder's jammed, but I think I fixed it. Oh, well, try shredding these $50 bills then. Seems like it's working. Mm, better try another 400 bucks. Stop. Instead of using money, use regular paper. And here's a better tip from Progressive on how not to waste money. Don't pay too much for car insurance. Drivers who switch and save could save hundreds. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Potential savings will vary. With one of the best savings rates in America, banking with Capital One is the easiest decision in the history of decisions. Even easier than choosing Slash to be in your band. Next up for lead guitar. You're in. Cool. <laughs> yep, even easier than that. And with no fees or minimums on checking and savings accounts, is it even a decision? That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com slash bank for details. Capital One and a member FDIC. Hi, I'm Matt Lieb. And I'm Vince Mancini. And this is Pod, Pod Yourself, Yourself a gun. gun. A Sopranos podcast where Vince Mancini and I go through every single episode of The Sopranos. And, and talk, talk about, about it. it. Thank you so much once again for joining us. Um, you know what I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask for five stars in a review on the fucking uh, Apple uh, podcast store because it uh, is, I don't know, I convinced myself a long time ago that like that matters a lot to the algorithm. <laughs> no one's actually confirmed whether or not that's true. Um, and I, I have noticed that... Uh, I don't know. Vince, have you ever looked up Joe Rogan on Apple Podcasts? No. Why? Does he just have a million one-star reviews or something? Well, so here's the thing. Um, Joe Rogan is exclusively on Spotify, but what there are instead are uh, Joe Rogan uh, experience podcasts about the show. Oh, And cool. these guys have thousands of reviews, and it's from people who have not listened to a single episode. <laughs> Um, but, uh, but think it's the Joe Rogan podcast. Mm. So it's, it's a mixture of people going like, this guy's a hero and is speaking truth to power and other people being like, you guys should not be supporting this white nationalist one star. <laughs> they, they're not listening to the actual. So what I'm saying is we should start a Joe Rogan podcast sure. so I can live my dream of having a highly rated, uh, highly reviewed podcast. Yeah. You'll get all the reviews that way. It's a, uh, it's real. Be careful what you wish for situation there. Seems yeah. Like. Yeah, but I mean, also smart on them for figuring out that you can just start a Joe Rogan podcast without Joe Rogan. Um, we had a lot of great reviews uh, come through. There was one recently uh, that said, um, uh, "This is the best Chef's Kiss uh, you know, podcast, except for Matt's baby talk." Uh, you might have to skip fifteen seconds when Matt starts to uh, to do baby talk. Or when he slips into his immature fascination with, quote, titties. <laughs> I don't, I'm not even sure what that's referring to. When do I do baby talk? I don't know. Maybe when you talk about the milk from the titties. Do I do that? Yes, yeah, I think I have done that. I've probably done that. I've been, all right. Well, I'll try to do less baby talk, uh, but, you know, <laughs> daddy like the milk milk. Um, anyways, five stars in a review. Um, and also... Vince, this is insane. Mm, um, go on. But we got, in the last week, we got two $100 Patreon subscribers. Yeah. Who, what are they thinking? You better go uh, and do stand-up for them now. I Okay, so I've mes messaged both of them, uh, and they both said, uh, well, one, uh, so Erica Nord uh, said, uh, so I was, uh, I was a little hammered. And uh, I decided, fuck it, um, and gave you guys $100. Please, you do not have to come to Florida. And I was like, okay, thank you. We'll, I'll, we'll say some nice things up top. And then uh, Ken Lee Bidwill, uh, he he just said uh, he wants us to you know talk about his dick and stuff. Mm. So I just want to say, Erica Nord, oh, my God, them titties. <laughs> them titties so milkable, dude. Like she's maybe the most you should beautiful. save these for the end. Like when new people might not be listening. Just I don't yeah, know. That's I, just a that's just a housewarming I, note. Okay, I mean, I listen. If you give a hundred dollars, uh, new people have to hear you be talked about. You know, in a complimentary way. That's okay. how I feel about it. All right, and also Kenley Bidwell. Oh my God, that dick so strong and so straight and firm. 
and a beautiful vein runs through it. Mm. Um, it's the most glowing dick I've ever seen. The main vein, uh, one might yeah, say. Yeah, got the main vein that drains. Uh, brain <laughs> drain in the main vein. Kenley, thank you. We fucking love you and your hot ass. And uh, Erica, um, your hair is smooth like the sun shine. I fucking <laughs> anyways should have said patreon.com slash broadcast for uh you know to, to please and also we'll be saying more nice things about you guys throughout because we love you all right enough of that shit hi new listeners um today we are going to be talking about from season six episode seven of the sopranos luxury lounge and our guest hmm. today Oh, he's fantastic. You've seen him on Conan. You've seen him do his half-hour special on Comedy Central. Ladies and gentlemen and everyone else, our guest today is comedian Alan Strickland-Williams. Hey, y'all. Thank you so much for having me after those... um... <laughs> those great and those great greetings for the uh the new fans i, I love it yeah i feel I, like the whole podcast should just be i mean what you were just doing <laughs> I, I i agree with that i feel like if you give lots of money to your favorite podcast the least you can do call is that talk rod about- yourself uh some come <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying it, it's like, you know, that's the least you could do is is pepper it throughout with like being like, man, Erica Nord got that tight pussy. I'm sorry. I asked. I just want to point out I, I anyone who fucking gives us money uh, like that much money. I, I ask first, like, can do you want us to keep it PG or can we just say like, you know, some pretty raunchy stuff? And she said it was cool. Um, but it, anyways, thank you, Alan, for coming on to. The world's thank, only Sopranos podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I was, I was, um, you know, longtime listener, and uh, when when the ass came through, that was a beautiful day. So thank you for having me. I, I'm I'm glad. I'm glad you wanted to do it. You are uh, one of just a handful of uh, comedian uh, guests or guests on this podcast who I have um, asked if they had a specific episode in mind. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, you looked through, you know, the season six catalog and you said, it's got to be Luxury Lounge. Mm. It's got to be. I love the ones. These are almost their own genre of Sopranos episode. Yes. Where it's sort of like it doesn't affect the big picture like Mm -hmm. these, like anything that happened here. Like, I love when they focus on the care. I also just I love. um I love Multisanti and La La Land. Like yeah. I just every time, every time, like fucking. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it just and then also just the the fucking fantastic Ben Kingsley. Yeah, not even cameo the Ben Kingsley part, and then you know the other cameo we'll get into. Yeah, um, Warren Bacall's in it. Just, I mean, what I, what's not to love? I completely agree. It is a separate. It's a it's a it's a whole subgenre of Sopranos, which is Chrissy meets a celebrity and becomes completely <laughs> starstruck and is just so enamored with Hollywood. It's like I I, well, I, I want a whole series of that. At, at any time, there's an episode where basically if there's an episode where um, where Tony doesn't go to therapy, yeah. that episode doesn't matter. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> essentially that yeah because it's like this is not a you know tony is gonna figure out some mafia shit today episode oh, and the, i think the... Sorry, uh, God. i i just i think that's because like the mafia shit that he has to figure out now is kind of like we are like in the veto era of this yeah. season like what are we going to do about veto yeah and last episode was just all of that so i felt mm-hmm. like this episode they're like, we're gonna take a break from kind of like the mafia well, yeah. crew drama. They know we have they have us on the hook after last episode. Totally. And they're yeah. like, Well, no, this isn't gonna be a show where uh, you know, where everybody's just like looking for the next cliffhanger. It's like we're gonna we're gonna fuck around a bit. Now that we know that you're for sure watching, we're gonna go off on some fun tangents. Yeah. Yeah. And they're able to do it because, you know, it's uh I, I mean, at this point in the series, I feel like it had already won every Emmy every year. It was just like sweeping Emmys and they could do whatever they want. And they were like, remember that John Favreau episode? Yeah. How about another one? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so, so so they decided to do it again and put Ben Kingsley in it, which, well, uh, wow. I, I also like the idea of it being like, um, you know, a lot of times I hear about shows and I think this happened with Entourage too. 
um, and maybe even Sex and the City, but you know, other HBO shows where it's like they're the biggest fucking show, they're the best show on TV. So all these people want to be on it. Yeah. So I, I'm also I'm like, is is this like people asking to be on The Sopranos and then being like, how are we gonna crowbar them into the street? Ah, let's yeah. assume to Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's got to be easier for, like, the Sopranos writers to be like, no, nah, you're going to play kind of a version of yourself, um, mm -hmm. but, like, the most Hollywoodized version. Because, like, whether it was, like, John Favreau or fucking, um, uh, who, who was uh, the other one? Um, Janine Garofalo plays <laughs> herself uh, mm -hmm. in that episode. Fucking, you know. Uh, Marty! Kundun! <laughs> I like, I like it. it. Oh, I love I love that. That's what that might be my favorite line from the whole thing. <laughs> but I, a little like Yeah. <laughs> I liked it. But yeah, I mean, you know, uh they they ask them to play themselves in kind of like um uh you know, the Hollywood version of themselves, which is like essentially like pussies. Like they're they're supposed <laughs> yeah. to be like, you know, um What if it's yeah, not? What if that's just like them playing themselves like straight on? I mean, I, I mean, I wouldn't blame any of them. What if they played it by if if they asked themselves, "What would I do in this situation?" And then that's how that's how. It plays <laughs> and Ben out. Kingsley's like, "Get a shiatsu." Yeah, that's what he would do. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's great watching Chris try to live his dream. I think we all relate to Chris on this level, where oh, we're yeah. all like, you know, we we all want to go to the luxury lounge and get mm -hmm. some free shit, but we're just not well, important enough. There, the other reason why I picked it was because uh, this is a Matt Wiener wrote it. Yeah. And so I thought that was sort of just like, you know, let's let's him doing Hollywood. Obviously, I'm like, yeah, that's a good. Uh, good yeah. Sell. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. The, the, there's also something, too, about like, OK, yeah, like maybe the Hollywood people are playing themselves or whatever. But like there's also like that look where they're actually and maybe we're getting too far into it. I, I can back no, off. No, that's fine. Go ahead. Th that that look when when. Uh, when Chris realizes what the fuck's going on in the luxury lounge, yes, yeah. When he's like watching these, like watching these mobsters, realize like, oh shit, Hollywood has got this whole thing like fleeced out. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's our just like, oh, it's like they're like kids in a candy store. It's like they're like, oh wow, we didn't know we could operate at this level. Yeah, um, yeah. you see his entire like, I don't know, his entire world of like the amount of graft that i have to yeah, do exactly. to get this shit and it's just being given away is mm -hmm. like you can see like almost <laughs> like the hammer and it's sickle. like rain man it's like <laughs> yeah. uh, the numbers start going yeah. yeah yeah this this is uh the the closest that chris has gotten to like solidarity with the working people of america <laughs> where, <laughs> where, where he's just like man this is this is unfair there is a lot of inequality <laughs> economic and other yeah, it's uh, it's pretty great. Um, yeah, and that that's one thing too that's also so funny. And I I don't know. I'm sure you guys probably already did like a whole thing about um, you know, many saints of Newark. But my mm -hmm. big takeaway from that movie was like, okay, the Moltisanti family is just like a billion times more fucking dumb than the Sopranos family. <laughs> yeah. And and so now watching <laughs> watching episodes with that information too is so just so it's just so fun to watch. Like, man, Chris never stood a fucking chance. He's yeah, just fucking no. dumb no. as a rock. Yeah. Well, at yeah. first when he was born, he remembered things from the other side. And, uh -huh. uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's, that's right. right. He, he yeah, had a premonition that Tony would eventually murder him one day. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Not that that's going to happen yeah, necessarily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I'm just yeah. kidding. We could yeah. do spoilers. Um, yeah. Uh, so do you, uh, you know, like, uh, do you, what other, like, what other mafia shows do you like? I don't know what question to ask. Uh, uh, so do you, do you like mafia movies? And I, stuff? I, I'll say that. I'll say this. My God, was it during the pandemic? It might've been before. I can't, I just have no sense of time. But my first complete watch of Sopranos was within the within the last, I want to say three years. Yeah. So I um, I also I I think it was maybe fair like within the last ten years that I saw The Godfather. So wow. it was not like a thing where I was like raised, like remembering gangster movies or anything like that. Um, yeah. Literally, my friend actually, um, Zed Cutsinger, a uh, big movie guy. He he was doing some question where he was like what are your favorite mafia gangster movies and i actually the only one that i actually remember watching as a kid was mafia 
which right, is yeah. like yeah. just a parody yeah, the, of all the mafia movies. Yeah, like airplane. It's just like that type of a shit, which I always like that type of shit. Yeah. Um, and some I, like some stu- really fucking dumb jokes in there. And then yeah, like a lot of this stuff, like especially like with the, when it comes to like Godfather. Oh, Casino, Casino and Goodfellas. I also saw during the pandemic. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. basically, what happened was. I was bored and looking for content or whatever the fuck. Yeah. And started watching Sopranos because I saw a couple here and there, but I never sat down and watched everything and just immediately like everything. And then I just, whatever was on Netflix, I would watch that and yeah. just like pounding, pounding salami while got, doing it. You got like red sauce pilled. The, you got oh, red- yeah. Well, big time. Big you just time. discovered a whole world of content that you'd yeah. bypassed you before. Yeah, man. Yeah. I, I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a Q and not you a non supporter now. Or, <laughs> nice. I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I uh, I I also just like I do think part of it too is just that like, you know, I don't think it's ever a good idea to start thinking about what is the best country or people. Uh-huh, sure. But I don't think it's led us to great po- points in our, in our Yeah, absolutely. As, I like the preamble. But, <laughs> but however, that I being gotta said, say, <laughs> Italy might be it. I mean, I really think if there had to be one just of the food and the people and like the air, I just think it's just Yeah, they kind of got it, it is, down. It's literally It is it Chef's is Kiss. That. They invented <laughs> Chef's Kiss for a reason. They saw their own people and they said, yeah, Gaba great. Uh, <laughs> Gaba uh, good was right there. Yeah, yeah, you know, I went for it. Uh, anyways, this is not a podcast in which we discuss puns about different Gaba based jokes. No, this is a Sopranos podcast in which we actually do do that. And we, of course... Cannot start the podcast without first playing the theme song. Look at the snow. Pod. Mama always said you be there. Chosen. Pod. Pod. Podcast. Pod. 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 Podcast. Oh, okay. Wait, (laughs) wait a second, though. Hold on. I was literally waiting. I just want to impart this to any listeners out there because I, as the listener, I was wondering when you because i know you play it every episode i'm like do you actually play it and do you actually just say pot over it <laughs> or is it pre-recorded and wow you're just sitting back in the cut not saying mm-hmm. a damn thing so oh, yeah, yeah that's all all pre-recorded uh, yeah that's all like, real thing. i mean you know yeah a lot of people have wondered if i do the the pods live and no i i, I have a <laughs> pre-recorded but i will be doing the pods live january 15th at sketch at fest oh, 10 p.m that. Sketchfest.com, San Francisco, sketchfest.com for tickets. Uh, please come see our live show at Piano Fight Theater. Anyways, sorry, I forgot. You can't to give say them a free top. segue like that and expect them not to. Just oh, I know, I know. If I oh, find a, plug, yeah. if I find an on ramp, I'm taking it. Um, today, we are going to be talking about, like I said before, uh, from season six of The Sopranos, episode seven. Luxury Lounge, which premiered April 23rd, 2006. Vince, break us off a little piece of that synopsis. I sure can. Christopher and Carmine travel to Hollywood to take the next step in making their movie, but quickly realize they're out of their depth. Artie feuds with Benny after his restaurant falls prey to one of Tony's scams. Mm, Yes, yes, that is essentially the episode and uh yeah so what was happening at the time that this episode came out Vince? yeah that's right uh matt you know we always uh, say that uh you can't <laughs> um, evaluate can't, the thing uh, uh, but, cultural you know, context blah blah blah, yeah, blah, 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 blah. blah. <laughs> that's why we go to the remember when machine what what remember Remember when it's the lowest form of conversation. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Uh, you know, we're going all the way back to April 23rd, 2006. Uh, yeah. That's when this episode premiered. The episode 
it's sort of like the uh, Kitchen Nightmares episode of The Sopranos. We got a we got a chef who's sort of lost his groove. He needs to get it back. Yeah. Um, and right about the time we just happened to have uh, some restaurant news. Uh, mm. well, this was in the New York Post. Uh, basically, uh, some post. Su- succession type shit was going down at the Benihana. Uh, oh shit! Hot oh, times right. for Benihana after working through family chill. <laughs> this should be a beautiful time to be Benihana founder Rocky Aoki. One daughter, Devin, is a much sought after actress slash model. His hobby of hot air ballooning is bringing him and his company lots of good publicity, and his what? Benihana chain is enjoying its best time in 45 years. <laughs> but but the popular New Yorker is still reeling from the chasm sliced into his family in recent <laughs> I'm years. I'm just thinking about like how the hot air balloon thing works, and I'm like, is it? do they take a bunch of onions and then put them in yeah. concentric circles, <laughs> and then the hot air yeah. from that? <laughs> it <laughs> should be shaped like an onion volcano, for sure. I mean, it really should be, yeah. right? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's you're sitting at the table and yeah, the table right. lifts up and, and flies. They yeah. use the steam from a giant <laughs> onion at the table. So not only are you eating delicious Benihana, but, uh, you know, you're flying. It's like those balloon. it's like those uh, those like carts that people can ride on and drink mm-hmm. and pedal at the same time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you've, you've probably heard this theory before, but you know how Tyrese Gibson has like a Benihana's in his backyard. I didn't Whoa. know that. Well, he no, does. He calls awesome. it. He calls it Gibbsy Hana, and he was actually in the second <laughs> Fast and Too. Fa- he was actually in Too Fast, Too Furious with uh-huh. Devin Aoki, this guy's daughter. Oh, oh shit! And I, so my like fan theory is that he discovered Benny Hana through uh, being in a movie through, with the daughter of with, the founder of Benny Hanas. And then that's one did, of the best ways to discover it. I think. Yeah. Personally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, straight yeah. from the source. That's right. <laughs> yeah, he got it right. He got it fresh, right from the horse's mouth. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. What, uh, so the split he, came after his son Kevin, who sits on the Benihana board. Kevin is, is a great so, fail son <laughs> name, by the way. Uh, this is this should be succession. This yeah. is way. By the way, at, at the Benihana board meetings, um, <laughs> there's a lawyer that will just uh, flip profit shares into yeah. the board members' mouths. <laughs> The split came after his son, Kevin, who sits on the Benihana board, voted in favor of a convertible series of stock, which diluted dad's holdings in the company from just over 50% to about 37%, Aoki said. Oh, shit. Rocky didn't talk to Kevin for a while after the vote, and that meant the family-loving Rocky couldn't talk to his grandkids either. It's not healthy not to talk to your kids and grandkids, Aoki told the Post last week. Uh, you get you get emotional blue balls. Yeah. Does this mean that uh, famed DJ Steve Aoki yes. is like is he the Connor of the? Uh... <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say like that, that's what's great about this is that you could you could definitely make a whole succession about the Benny Hanna family. Only like Logan Roy would be like this hot air ballooning uh, ex. <laughs> Ex like I think he's like an ex athlete in Japan or somehow. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, and he started the Benny Hanas, <laughs> and now his kids are like an actress model. There's a DJ, and then I guess Kevin is like the Kendall, who's like yeah, he's to, the Kendall. He's the one know. who just wants to take over. Yeah. Oh man, that is incredible. That's so priceless. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you gotta you gotta admit, like this was 15 years ago, and Benny Hanas is like still going strong as a chain, somehow. as far as I know. I mean, I, I you don't run into them a lot in LA. You, uh, I, I, I well, feel they spawned like it's... too many imitators now. I feel. I mean, like the what do you call closest it? closest one is in Encino. Which yeah, makes yeah. A lot of sense. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's Encino... so many teppanyakis. I guess they're not making money off mm-hmm. all those, but still. I mean, are, are those the places where you go and you cook it yourself? Is that no? Or... It's the one where they do the show in front of you and they make that. Oh, they do the show. See, the... I, I I went to a Benihana one time for uh, a friend's birthday party, and I remember thinking like, "This is embarrassing," <laughs> because I was like, "This is because it, it was like a it was a grown ass man, and yeah. he was he just wanted to see the shrimp get flipped." Yeah, we did and that for like, a birthday like a couple months ago. It's pretty. I love. I love it. Take me to. Yeah, t- but you, I mean, yeah, I guess I, you live in Fresno. You yeah. know, out there flipping, <laughs> you know, shrimp into. We a don't chef's have hat. a medieval times, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't have Knott's Berry Farm out there, yeah. so you, you don't go even know. do rides with the berries. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> other news. Other business news. Uh, Kenneth Lay was about to take the stand in the Enron trial. Shit. Oh, I'm looking forward to it, the 64-year-old ex-chairman said last week with the same confident smile he has displayed since his fraud and conspiracy trial began nearly three months ago. I mm. want to put more of the facts and truth out about what happened at Enron. Uh, 
basically uh fast forward um he lost uh yep pretty bad he was found guilty on six counts of conspiracy and fraud by the jury uh in a separate bench trial uh judge lake ruled that lay was guilty of four additional counts of fraud and making Mm. false statements so uh you might naturally wonder like how long did he go to prison how long did he serve in a prison up to now uh he actually died before sentencing three months after this article was written he uh, had a heart attack while vacationing in aspen so they say. So the news claims. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag. He's just Ken par- Lay did not have a heart attack. <laughs> He's partying with uh, Jelaine Maxwell's dad somewhere. I know. I was just <laughs> gonna say he, he died on some island. Uh, Prince uh, <laughs> Saint something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, other news. Uh, lawmakers urge tax on oil profits. Uh, the government should consider a tax on oil companies if they make excessive profits amid rising gasoline prices, a leading Republican senator said Sunday. Uh, that was Arlen Specter was calling for tax on oil. Uh, that, that was because uh, the gas prices were up to almost $3 a gallon and everybody was, uh, you know, having How a they going to survive that? That's funny that's Arlen Specter because I was like, wow, a Republican could not say that today. And I was like, oh, yeah. Our inspector switched parties to the Democratic Party when yeah. Obama won. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah. Oh right, 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 right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're worried. We're we're back to being worried about gas again. Meanwhile, like I think rents and uh, home prices have actually tripled since 2006, and gas is <laughs> what a dollar thirty more than it was. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's like sure that that is uh, that's a lot, but um, yeah. you know, if you're living in your car. You don't really need the gas, yeah. you know, mm-hmm, <laughs> like mm-hmm. <laughs> it is a home. Yeah. It's, yeah. I don't know. It's weird. That's, to a, be- that's an immobile home. That's right. <laughs> yeah. uh, so the top movies in the country were Silent Hill, Scary Movie 4, The nice. Sentinel, Ice Age mm-hmm. Meltdown, and The Wild, which is five movies that, I mean, I guess I sort of remember Scary Movie 4, but wow it's a bad movie week yeah. weekend real bad. yeah that is they really <laughs> uh i had to look up the sentinel apparently that's like a michael douglas movie some sort of is it uh, about a newspaper it seems like it's about a newspaper no i think it's about some sort of government chicanery spies and shit i don't know everything oh, okay. was about like everything was like a dull spy procedural from between like 2005 and 2010 that was like every movie uh, yeah where people would just like walked down hallways having like really intense conversations about uh, yeah people with night vision goggles recording yeah was, yeah yeah boring time yeah uh top song still bad day by daniel powder which i mm-hmm. believe he wrote about uh, the enron trial um, sure and uh <laughs> i'm just gonna wait keep... did the guy from powder <laughs> <laughs> yeah he uh <laughs> he actually I didn't know that guy did music yeah he put yeah. his he put his hand on ken lay's <laughs> wrist and he made him feel what it was like to be like a deer that he was hunting it's crazy <laughs> he disappeared in electricity and then just a tape deck flew down and it was the song bad day can you believe i, I forget how much he sold the fucking script for powder for but it was like yeah i got this movie it's about this guy who's really pale and uh he can make he people... has electric magic <laughs> yeah, he yeah. has electric magic and he can also uh fucking green mile people when yeah they killed deer and it's like a coming of age story too, right? It's like he's in high school. Totally, like yeah. Ostracized. That's yeah, right. It's yeah, a high yeah. school story. It's like <laughs> seven movies. It's like so many movies. He gets bullied on account of being electric magic man, who's also very yeah. pale. Yeah, man, dude, who can who can't relate to that? <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a we've metaphor. all been there you guys he was doing an art you wouldn't yeah. understand. I was pretty much exactly like powder in junior high school but without the powers yeah. <laughs> i was just a really skinny paste guy <laughs> i uh, i don't know anything about daniel powder is he related related to like the crazy remember the crazy workout lady who had like the bleached hair susan powder uh, no i don't remember, remember that miss no. powder no all right Ooh. she sounds hot though yeah, oh, she well. got that electric pace. I'm sorry. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, <laughs> she zap you. She zap you for zap, real. Zap, <laughs> zip, zap, zap. Um, uh, <laughs> talk rock, top rock song uh, was is still "Speak" by Godsmack. That's uh, that was man. on the charts for quite a while. Oh, hell yeah, that yeah. was on for a while. Mm-hmm. Fuck. 
And so that is what was going on at the time that this episode came out. Yeah. Well, now, now the episode makes sense. Yeah. Now yeah, you got yeah, context yeah, yeah. for all Once this. you have the context, you're like, oh, I see yep. why they went I to get California. I, I get why Artie had a failing restaurant now. I mean, I kind of <laughs> get why Chris thought it might be possible to sell Cleaver to fucking, you know, to Ben Kingsley because mm. fucking... Hey, at that time, Saw was a big movie. Yeah. So was Ice Age 2, The Meltdown. Mm-hmm. Sure. So, so mm-hmm. he was like, it is an open field right now. Um, I do I, I do love that when they're pitching to Kingsley, um, <laughs> they Lil, I think it's Lil Carmine shouts out Sexy Beast, which is <laughs> yeah. a great uh, uh, gangster movie. Um, I saw that. I saw Sexy Beast with my dad and my Me uncle t- in the movie theater. Me too. My, my dad, dad, yeah, my dad fell asleep in Sexy Beast. This is not a movie you fall asleep in, <laughs> yeah, especially no. during the theaters. I'm like, wow, that was like, must have been burning the midnight oil or something. But uh, I that saw was such with, a funny pull. I saw it with my dad uh, as well, and I remember um, he. It was the first time I was in. Uh, I mean, I'd seen like some strange movies with him in my time, but like, I I was pretty young to be seen i remember feeling a little yeah. uncomfortable yeah, yeah, yeah to to be seeing this movie with Same. him and um i think it was at the point when doesn't someone drop a whole tv on someone's head in that movie yes yeah i think, I think so. it was at that point when i was like you know dad you have a responsibility as an adult to take me to films <laughs> that uh do not give me nightmares um Hmm. but maybe uh, i don't know maybe i was actually i thought that was going to be the movie that finally got americans really excited about using the word cunt all the time Um, uh it never happened it never happened which is a shame yeah didn't yeah then if if snatch can't do it yeah nothing's gonna do it yeah but uh because this is a a ben kingsley episode they should have a sequel to snatch called cunt (laughs) (laughs) uh because this is a ben kingsley episode um and he's got that you know great ability to do that cockney voice and Mm -hmm. you know all that stuff um this week's bada b story um is from my favorite cockney band of all time i don't know if they're actually i think they're they're cockney um the sex pistols so uh enjoy this week's bada b story yes I am no score safety. I know what I want, but I know how to get it. I want to annoy an Oscar winner. I want to meet Ben Kingsley. That bloke from Gandhi. Ben Kingsley for the movie. I hope he reads. Some stuff from luxury lounge. Is this all free? Cause you don't need it. I wanna be Ben Kingsley. Yeah. Well, we have political, some fun. political, just yeah. like the original. It's very political. Uh, it's very raw. It's very real. You know, it's about. Um, it. Wanting to meet Ben Kingsley <laughs> and, uh, you know, wanting to fucking get some free stuff from the luxury lounge. You anyway, do, you do a really good Johnny Rotten. I feel like this is the second uh, Johnny Rotten parody I, that I, you've done on the show. Yeah. Both really just solid works. Uh, yeah, yeah, I had to. It's hard to not um, kind of like slide into like the B-52s guy. Mm, sure. Uh, so you really got to kiss gotta cousins. Hit, yeah, the, exactly. Uh, so. Anyways, uh, well done. Well done. Thank you. You can listen to the full song at the very end of the episode. He always does that. I mean, I love when Johnny Rotten does the bitchy sneer, but like, yeah, me too. And you know, a huge Sex Pistols fan, but I I feel like he always, he switches from bitchy sneer into like surprised and scared, uh, Johnny Rotten. That's like his other (laughs) mode. And I don't enjoy that nearly as much. I don't know why anyone never like, what does that, what, what does that one sound like? Oh, there's a snake. Like that uh, or um, 
God, I'm trying to think of songs where he does it, where he's just like, oh, no, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I like him screaming or, or like being afraid because he's like, at the end of the day, he's a little British kid. Yeah. So, you know, it's just like he switches from like, Jim, Jim and Ichiro, you know, mm-hmm. to like step in time, step in time. You know what I mean? <laughs> so like <laughs> he's, uh, he's got those two modes and I feel like they're both. Um, very chimney sweep. Sure, sure. But yeah, so Sopranos. This episode, Luxury Lounge, what do we think? Um, general thoughts, Vince. Uh, I mean, again, I love this. We, we, we touched uh, touched on it earlier uh, mm-hmm. before the Remember When machine, but uh, yeah, I, I love all the Sopranos episodes in which they get to uh, cast their sort of jaundiced eye on Hollywood as opposed to the mafia because I feel like they're they're just as good it's hard to it's hard to say whether i like them writing dumb mafia guys or uh pretentious la people better because they're yeah so good at both and then of course like the other the other storyline is about Artie, who really is like one of my favorite minor characters in the sopranos Mm -hmm. and he always has just intense like divorced millhouse dad energy (laughs) and uh (laughs) like this entire episode is just about him having a fucking midlife crisis and uh, very much like it, it takes the format of like any given cooking show where they go to a restaurant and uh, and you, wa- you watch any restaurant sort of, you want them to update their menu and, and get back to... Uh, to making good food again and uh and and he we we get we got to see him do that which was nice Artie is great because Artie is such a loser <laughs> and he is the best kind of loser in that he's one of those types of losers that won't let you forget that he knows he's a loser yeah right. <laughs> like almost everything he says is he's like the, the scene with him and Tony watching the girls and he's just like <laughs> You can fuck him. I can't. Yeah, he wants to shame you. He wants to shame you for not being as big a loser as he is. Right. Make it it your fault and your problem somehow. (laughs) He's he's the most misery loves company motherfucker on the show because he really is like, yeah, he he his entire moral compass is like based on things that he wants to do. But physically, like he can't like he's mad at Benny. Uh, you know, for sleeping with Martini, uh, Martina, because mm-hmm. uh, he's a married man. Like, yeah. like no, he just, just has a dry dick, and he's very angry about it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And Artie he, is has the driest dick, and I feel bad because you know Charmaine is. I feel like she's in it for the um the free pasta. This is the most so sympathetic the they've ever made Charmaine on this show. Like in this episode, True. like she's a very sympathetic character in this episode but i feel like this entire episode was basically answering the question that i i've always had about vesuvio and about like jersey italians in general which is like don't you fuckers ever get tired of like chicken marsala and (laughs) you know uh chicken piccata and no like the same like 10 italian american dishes that you've been eating your whole life that you go to the restaurant to have this guy cook for you even though you make the same shit at home like how it seems like it would make you insane to keep eating the same 10 dishes over and over again and finally Artie goes a little bit nuts from uh cooking the same fucking food over and over again i mean i feel like i relate to that on on like a comic level like as a comic it's doing the same jokes over and over Mm -hmm. again where um you know you you feel like you it's a it's a quick way to go insane you will go insane if you do it it reminds me of like um you start hating yourself because you get so bored of hearing yourself tell the same mm -hmm. jokes slash cook the same food but the audience is still reacting like the, you know, the, the, they still the piggies still want the same slop. Yeah, they yeah. still want the slop. Yeah, so you <laughs> yeah, you end do. up you end up hating yourself and resenting them and just like thinking <laughs> the whole world sucks. Right, right. It, it, like already uh, this episode has the same uh, manic energy that I got from that video of when Pablo Francisco like went like uh, had some sort of cocaine induced mania over at the Sacramento punchline. And they had to like call the paramedics. Cause he was just on stage over and over going in a world, like over and over and over. <laughs> and uh, it was like, Holy shit. This guy's done this bit so much that he's lost his mind. Oh, um, shit. And that's what I felt like with 
you, just watching Artie throughout this series, making the same thing over and over, and having having a a bunch of mobsters start complaining about like the quality yeah. of the same food that they've had yeah, over and yeah. over again. It makes you wonder, like these guys, how do they know? Maybe they're tired of it. Is it possible they're just tired of it? How would they know it's bad now? You know, well, because um, he got bored of cooking it. Just like when you get bored of, like it's a di- there's a difference between you know. Uh, telling a hack joke with some energy and verve as opposed mm-hmm. to like sleepwalking through it. And he's just like sleepwalking through all this food. Th- and that's when they there's notice. Also, there's also a subtle thing too, that came out in like the argument with the, one of the later arguments between Artie and Tony when Artie was like, good luck getting your, uh, getting the new chef to like make your like weak ass, like food right. You have yeah. To have Cause the pancreas, cause the pancreas shit. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, Oh, maybe it all go. Maybe that's like actually way more telling than just a simple line. Maybe it's like Tony's basically enjoyment of food has been like gone. Yeah. And Tony's the man. And Tony's the, the big man. So like if big man's not having a good time while he's eating food, what yeah. are we doing here? Why are we at the restaurant? Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I, I think that there might be a little building block there that I, and I, I think that know. like he is like him already being generally threatened by this, this new chef in town that people are talking about around the dinner tables, including Artie's very own dinner table at Vesuvio. They're talking about Da Giovanni. Mm-hmm. Now, when I first watched this episode, I remember thinking, oh, his name is Don Giovanni. <laughs> no. <laughs> The name is Da D A Giovanni. Yeah. So I oh, love, wow. yeah. <laughs> and so I love the that this new like chef that they're going to for the exact same food that they've had for their entire lives is still kind of trashy. Well, like D- Da well, Giovanni. That is just maybe... means that's just like the Italian way of saying somebody's house. Like, oh, we're going over to. Oh, is that mat. right? Yeah. <laughs> that, Let's okay, go that have dinner the mat. Like that means like at your house. Right. Oh. Oh. So, duh. So is like, it the same it's like as Giovanni's house? Basically, like. Oh, ah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I but thought it was like. I think hey, you're right because they should. I mean, da gabagool. I thought it was just like a phonetic way of spelling the. <laughs> no, but I will say, like, when they show the exterior of the Giovanni, like, I I was thinking that it was going to be some sort of like, you know, white tablecloth. No, white yeah, tablecloth yeah. like Michelin star place, but no, it really is just another different strip mall Italian joint with bad font yeah, on yeah. the awning. Yeah, a slightly, uh, you know, more fancy Olive Garden. Yeah, they, they they go to a lot of different, you know, fancy Olive Gardens on The Sopranos. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I was I was thinking too about how like also I think part of it that you know we were talking about the the wave in the Wayback Machine the the news that was going on, but. This was like a recession show. Like it yeah, was a show yeah. about like the Bush era and everything. And so, yeah, like a lot of restaurants did take like a huge hit. Sure. And then that just made me think about like, oh man, it would be, I want, what I want is a Sopranos reboot series where it's just Vesuvio during the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> just like, <laughs> just watching outdoor, outdoor dining at Vesuvio. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's how they to... how they like bring like delivery wine crafts right to your door and shit <laughs> just watching Artie buco in a station wagon with a bunch of just like trying foil. to get this ppl loan oh, yeah. He's, yeah. he's doing uh he, he's doing like zoom uh <laughs> zoom banter with the guests where he's like wow the way you two are looking at each other you guys might have to get a private chat Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so- oh, also, also one thing about this episode that I did mark down, just a quick mm-hmm. thing. Only took us three minutes and twenty seconds to get a Bustin' Balls reference in there. Oh yeah, uh, that was that was pretty fast. I yeah, pretty I good. actually, I, I, I have a clip of that. Uh, the scene um, opens. Well, the opening scene is is just this brief, rusty storyline where the mm-hmm. you you have um, two uh, Dago Wap Guineas directly from Pasta Stan are uh, talking <laughs> to that one guy about the murder of Rusty, and uh, they're surprised that the American speaks good Italian mm-hmm. D- doesn't matter. But then we get into so Tony. I, and f- I did have a, Oh, go ahead. Yeah. It's funny that they gave like this guy who's basically like Christopher's uh, junkie buddy. Uh, yeah. Like all this backstory. Like, does he, I don't remember. Does he ever recur as a character? Cause this really felt like, Oh, we're going to start to learn 
more I about know, this guy. Like this guy's got some sort of secret that we need to uh, hear about. He shows up again to do more junky stuff, but no, as far as I remember, unless I'm misremembering it and he had some sort of crucial role in something that maybe he didn't uh, No. As far as I know, his most crucial role is doing heroin and this um like, and maybe this they thing. were trying to say that if you have actually like grown up with some experience of the real Italy and then you have to live the rest of your life in New Jersey, like you would immediately take to heroin. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I get it. I I don't even think you need any experience outside of New Jersey to want to be a junkie. (laughs) It's just, uh, you know, ain't so Dolce anymore. No, (laughs) but yeah, he's, uh, yeah, he shows up and, uh, I had to look him up because he looked so familiar, but I don't think I know him from anything. He's uh, he just yeah I don't know he's he's great I liked him a lot I think he's an, a really good actor for such a bit part, um, but Tony and Phil are celebrating uh, two new made guys and uh, Phil goes on a little tirade uh, where he talks about busting balls but he also um, says a lot of slurs and um, mm-hmm. I, I have a clip I of hate that. Phil I've hate Phil Leotardo so much. <laughs> Yeah, oh he's he's a piece of shit. He looks like the Shaw of Iran, and he's homophobic. <laughs> um, and uh, obviously, you know, I've bleeped out uh, all of the, the bad parts. Sure, we break some balls here tonight, but I go way back. And in light of recent humiliations, it's an honor to be joined by men. And not f- faggot ass, f- cornhole and f- cucks. Faggot, 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 faggot. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I think you might have missed some of the stuff. I think yeah, I missed yeah, yeah. some. <laughs> That's okay. Someone, uh, know, someone sent we, us... we know he was saying it with love. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, someone you know... sent us a fan theory about Phil Leotardo. Did you see the email, that email, Matt? I did. Whoa. I did. The fan theory is that he is uh, gay? Sure. I, yeah. I, I'll buy that. I mean, I don't it, think it the, works as, quite as well as Beansy and uh, Jackie right. Priel, but or what? Or what was his name? The other Priel. Oh, oh, uh, Richie Priel. Richie Priel. Uh, yeah, I could see it though. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I feel it, you can kind of make that fan theory for a lot of the Sopranos, mm-hmm. and you, your confirmation bias at work will make it true. Um, but I am interested sure. in seeing uh, where that goes because I've never noticed that at all. But he did email and say specifically, like, start looking for it now. Um, so, you know, we'll update you as we go if we if we notice anything to the, uh, you know, if there's Don't anything the in that Gay watch. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. <laughs> gay watch. <laughs> oh, anyways. Uh, <laughs> so, um <laughs> The Phil Leotardo is still mad about the whole veto thing, um, and uh, everyone kind of quickly. His, his, that's his whole character thing, and every he's just always mad about something. Yeah, yeah he's kind of just, just like uh, a like a grumpy prick that everyone hates, and they never I literally, make him any different than that, which I kind of appreciate. <laughs> I literally just wrote down, dude, Phil Leotardo sucks. <laughs> Get him out of there. Anyway. Yeah, no, he's he is terrible. And uh, it, it's interesting because like his character is both like a prick to everyone and constantly like shit on. He, like he is he is the second mm-hmm. in command. He holds no real power himself. Uh, you know, now that like Johnny's in prison, he's like starting to flex a little more. And it's it, it's not really until like the next um, season where you're going to see him kind of uh, trying to trying to flex a little more than he is. Um, but he's like that guy on Twitter who's just like a constant contrarian where like mm-hmm. sometimes he's right, <laughs> but he's just such a miserable prick that everybody's kind of like, up oh, here comes fucking Phil Leotardo again with another one of his complaints about <laughs> something or other. Yeah, I honestly, though, if I did, if I did start interacting with someone who had Leotardo as their avatar on Twitter, I would be I would definitely stay away. (laughs) Stay away. That's an immediate mute. I mean, I'll we'll follow each other, but I'm muting them immediately. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So now everyone starts talking about what we were saying. You know, everyone is annoyed at the whole fucking, you know, the long waits at Vesuvio, the shitty food, like the quality is bad. Meanwhile, Artie is completely distracted by his uh, new host um, at Vesuvio, Martina, who uh, is from Albania. 
and uh, is, you know, fucking you know, hot as shit. Sorry, I just realized. Uh, you know who that heroin addict guy is? Who? Uh, hold on. Let me make sure I'm right on this. Make sure you're right. Because if you're wrong on this podcast, we will uh, get emails. Isn't he the guy in the fucking bunny suit in Donnie Darko? Is he the guy in the bunny suit in Donnie oh, wow. Darko? Isn't he? I, I don't know. I'm uh, now uh, you got me googling bunny suit guy Donnie Donnie Darko. And I mean all I'm seeing is a mask. Frank. No, I know who you're talking about. I don't I don't was it that guy? Come on, show show a picture of Frank. Oh, no, I James guess different Duvall. guy. Oh, what is no. that guy? It's a different same. guy. They look the same. Well, racist. Sorry. Um we're gonna get emails now because I you mean, fucking just can't look at tell- a picture of these two guys and tell me I'm crazy that they don't look the freaking they don't look the same over here. Uh, hold yeah. on, they look similar. I mean, then the, there's also um, I I thought he was maybe the guy. Um, I don't know. He was from a sitcom. He's in all of the fucking uh, like Scorsese movies. Uh, he was in Goodfellas. You know that uh, that that young guy. Um, fucking. Oh, now I'm going into your 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 chat. Yeah, he kind of looks like him. You're right. James Duvall sort of looks like the the Italian junkie. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Point sorry. is, I just had to make my point, but you know, it's not him. Um. So Martina, Martina is from Albania, and uh, my question is: Is Albania um? close to italy yeah because sort she's... of it's on the other okay it's on the other side of the adriatic okay because she sounds like uh italian it's uh, like her, her all of her mannerisms and the it's the... uh it's right across from the heel oh it's across from the heel it's right oh. across from the heel over the water it's albania is right next to greece oh okay so this makes sense to me so albania is basically just uh it's another type of like italian like like greeks <laughs> sure. uh well i already already had a, already had a great great line um at one point where he goes another fun fact from the balkans yeah yeah that's right <laughs> yeah i i actually i i have a clip of that it is uh it's basically um benny is is bragging <laughs> about how in Albania he would be considered tall. No, oh, right, it was, right, right. It was funny because uh, it, was fun, it, it, it was funny because he said in Montenegro he would be considered tall, which is like completely wrong. It's actually like one of the tallest countries. Like it's in, oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's why wow. there's so many like basketball players from like Serbia, Montenegro. Yeah, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. But yeah, uh, like Artie is noticing that Benny and uh, Martina are talking a lot. And it is clear that he is like, he's in love with her or he's mm-hmm. in lust with her at least. Like he mm-hmm. and and he's he's absolutely like abusing his power. Like he's he's trying to play the nice guy. Like mm-hmm. the, the, his whole thing is like, I'm such a nice guy that girls, you know, they just they don't want the nice guy. They want the tough guy. And it's like, you, you're not actually a nice person at <laughs> no. all. But the things that he's done, like he's like, Oh, I helped her find an apartment. I'm helping her with her green card thing. And it's all because he just wants to fuck, which is why when he sees Benny and Martina getting along, uh, he punishes her. And I have a, I have a clip. Martina was just telling me that in Montenegro, I'd be the tallest guy. Another fun fact from the Balkans. <laughs> Martina, sweetheart, can I talk to you for a second? You're looking at me very serious. You remember I had that friend in Manhattan that was going to help speed you through the green card process? Apparently, it's not happening. Why? Too much on his plate, he said. I guess you're just going to have to do it yourself. I'm sorry. All those forms. Shit me. (laughs) I wish I could help you. But really, it's a small inconvenience compared to living in freedom, right? God. (laughs) <laughs> he's such a scumbag like uh, the, uh, number one to immediately just be like oh fuck you i'm not gonna help your immigration status now that you're talking to benny but also to 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 pull the freedom card like yeah that, that's another like very I, I don't know i would consider uh a very it's a very 9-11 era in which we are like summing up the entire capital of the country as freedom freedom is our only capital and it means nothing 
and it's like this completely nebulous term, but we all have agreed that it has like currency. Like well, I, I you're wonder in if freedom. Na- I wonder if now, like you know, this was back when still like normal people believed in the American dream. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so now I'm like, I wonder if now Artie would be like, ah, it's all like a fucking shit because he's because he yeah, lost this- his restaurant three times or whatever the fuck. It is a question uh, as to what the. <laughs> political beliefs of Artie would be in <laughs> current America. <laughs> I could see him being a Trump guy, but uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. Maybe he's, maybe he's a social, maybe he's Bernie. Maybe, maybe he stop or just, he stops voting. Or no, so, I yeah. Know, I see him like that. He, either. He's a Trump guy or he is like, uh, What's the guy, the Eric Clapton looking guy who was like the the, <laughs> the reply one guy? Of those uh, reply, one of those like hardcore yeah, yeah, yeah. MSNBC reply guys. Like I, I feel like he's either one or the other. Dude, an already reply guy who was just like keeps replying to everyone with another fun fact from the Balkans. Yeah, that's another avatar to, to stay away from. On Twitter, yeah, stay uh, away from that. The self chosen already avatar. You go to its likes tab and it's all porn. <laughs> like, he did already did have good instincts though. You you really sh- short man named Benito. Yeah, not a not a you don't trust them. They're always up to something not not good over there. So. Yeah, you, you you could tell. But you could it, tell. But the the instincts are coming from a bad place. Very very yeah. selfish losery move, Artie. The other yeah. side of the coin is that Martina basically just like summed up all of Artie in a split second. Like she knows yes. exactly mm-hmm. what he's about and what he's trying to do. And, oh, it's uh, it is it's beautiful. Like in There's order to this, get there yeah we we have to talk about the credit card scam that's being run mm-hmm. uh th- so um all of these credit card uh numbers are being stolen from multiple places it's one of tony's like many you know scams that he has that is not you know it's akin to him you know putting the screwdriver into the parking meter in donnie brasco you know just finding ways mm-hmm. to chip away at you know, little bits at a time and um Apparently, he doesn't know that this is also happening over at Vesuvio, but Vesuvio is getting a bunch of cards stolen by Martina, who gives them to Benny. And uh, the Amex people show up at Vesuvio and basically say, you're cut off completely. Uh, <laughs> and and so then Artie has no idea who's been doing it, and he decides to interrogate all of his employees <laughs> in one of my favorite Artie scenes in yeah. the series. It is so fucking funny, just him him trying to play both good cop and bad cop at the same time. We have no intention of pressing charges. It's just got to stop. Understand, this is not about a 42-ounce jar of Moroccan olives or a couple of rolls of toilet paper here. This is our livelihoods. Are you looking at me? Nobody's looking at anybody. I didn't take the toilet paper. But the olives? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking here. <laughs> I'm just saying if you don't come clean to us, those investigators, well, they just might question the honesty of somebody that wears a coat pulled from the lost and found. Fuck this. No, fuck you. I don't know which one of you pieces of shit did this, but I've been good to you. And you pay me back with nonstop ass rape. Well, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> oh god Artie uh, just, that guy's a great me is that that's Milo Vin, Vintimiglia he's, he's such a yeah. good uh great actor non so pathetic <laughs> just went to, with, trying to put on a good face and just throwing it all away so hard and fast <laughs> when he when it breaks yeah he cracks like an egg <laughs> <laughs> no fuck you he's, he, and Artie has a history on this show of like uh being just unable to be a tough guy he he doesn't know how to not wear his feelings on his sleeve and so at every single moment you can see the desperation you can see the anger and everything and in that moment just watching him fucking blow up <laughs> at an employee over the fact that he wears a coat from the lost and found <laughs> it's just, i like the, the concept of like I'm not naming any names, but, and then you say some like extremely specific fact about one person that (laughs) everybody knows who you're talking about. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. This isn't about the toilet paper or the Moroccan olives (laughs) and just looking at that guy. It is, it's fantastic. The Venture X card from Capital One gives you premium travel benefits. Perfect for seeing Taylor Swift, the Eras tour presented by Capital One. Oh, I do love her. Earn five times miles on flights, 
and 10 times miles on hotels through Capital One Travel. Enjoy your stay in Suite 13. Whoa, 13? That's Taylor's lucky number. The Venture X card from Capital One. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com for details. Progressive presents Adjusting to the Suburbs. You used to associate crickets with silence. But since you bought a house in the suburbs, you know crickets hate silence. If any other creature realized rubbing its legs together made a piercing high-pitched noise, they might think, maybe I won't do that. Constantly. All night long. Luckily, you can save with Progressive by bundling your home and auto. Now that's something to make noise about. Just not constantly. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company coverage provided in service by affiliates and third-party insurers. Like, of course, he is wrong um, that, you know, this is the employee who did it. It turns out to be Martina. Well, also, and, a couple uh, of the chefs want to bury their cock in Charmaine's titties. We forgot to mention yeah. that part. <laughs> that's right. There's two chefs in Spanish saying that. And I felt like... If I ever got a bit role on The Soprano. <laughs> That's your bit role in life. And my bit role in life is just talking to a coworker. Go, well, no, I would not really do that. I'm a good guy. Um, but uh, yeah, so we find out that it was actually Martina who was doing it. And we actually find out from this, like, um, I guess it's, she's the office snitch. We've never seen her before. Yeah. But Sandy. Right. Sandy, the house snitch shows up and tells every. Uh, I mean, if you've worked yeah. in restaurants, there's always the one waitress mm-hmm. that's been there like a little bit longer than everybody else who is right. like think thinks of themselves as like the deputized authority right. of the restaurant. I had yeah. one who, uh, you know, you have to refill the like the sugar caddies on the table uh-huh. with the, and she was OCD, so she's like, okay, there needs to be uh, four white sugars. Four raw sugars, two sweet and lows, two splendas, two uh, whatever the fuck the other one is, and right. all of the labels have to be facing the same direction and always mm. in that exact order. Oh my god! And if I like did it wrong or didn't face the labels facing the right direction, like I would get scolded for it. She would tell on you? No. Well, she would. She would just scold me herself. Oh, she, she would. She would take it upon because, herself to scold you because she, like, she could have told on me, but no one else cared. Like, she was the only one who cared. <laughs> so of course, she, yeah, like she's just bothering you. Yeah. Oh, like if yeah. she would have told the boss, the boss would have been like, "Who? What? Who gives a shit?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is Sandy. Is is very much so that character? Just like, I mean, she's she's talking about the fucking the coat that the guy stole from the lost and found. Um, by the way, it's not stealing if it's in the lost and found. Yeah, it's no. like someone's got to find it eventually yeah you um, give that like a six week eh, and yeah, maybe that's a little long but most. after yeah after a month that shit's any that's it that's up for grabs that is fair everyone game. knows that yeah um and then talks about martina's 600 hundred dollar shoes and that's when uh Artie goes to confront her and um at, and Martina reads him in a way that is so fucking this hilarious and perfect. Such a fascinating little mini scene here to me because like she, so she cracks immediately. So she goes yeah. from like, she, she cannot hold in a secret and she feels bad. And then she goes from like shame to anger to like burn it all down within the space of like less than 30 <laughs> seconds. And she yeah. kind of nailed the whole scene. I thought, and oh, it's uh, like on paper, I'd be like, ah, it feels like she just went, zero to 90 too fast but uh it totally works how could you do this to me you are so mean to me like helping you find the apartment (laughs) teaching you to drive as soon as you found out i wasn't going to fuck you you started picking on me i want to fuck you (laughs) you certainly have a high opinion of yourself you stare at me like food well i never fuck you I go to Benny and we laugh at you when i fuck him in the pile of money that we take from your stupid customers (laughs) you're fine this guy chill Oh yeah? Oh, who's laughing now? Oh, what do you think, I can't press charges because of my friendship with Tony? Three months you worked here. You think that doesn't go in your permanent record? We lead the world in computerized data collection. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, okay, Snowden. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I like like that he immediately went to don't flatter yourself, don't flatter yourself, because that is such like a, that's such a sexually harassing boss move. Yeah, 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 and it's also it's like that is the go-to line also for any simp yeah. who gets called <laughs> yeah. out on being a yeah. simp. Uh, yeah, you like, wish, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you wish I'd want to fuck you. I don't want to fuck anybody, and it's like <laughs> <laughs> you you can feel the desperation. But uh, yeah, his immediate like he he reverts to this go this will go on your permanent record, which is yeah. um yeah. 
One of the lamest things you can yeah. say yeah. in the history of the world. <laughs> They're yeah. vice principal. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Martina, uh, just Martina describing we, me and Benny laugh at you as we fuck on the pile of money that we steal from your stupid customers. Just fuck. Yeah. I mean, yeah. got him. She's just, yeah, she was, she was throwing fastball after fastball there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She 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 clocked them good. Well, they they had to they had to give Artie enough fuel to actually be able to beat the shit out of Benino later. Yeah. So like they yeah. the, so all that dialogue had to like hit him like a ton of bricks cuz I was like I kind of forgot that he actually did you know confront him and 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 like, you know, definitely And he won a fight. Loose. Yeah. This yeah. is yeah, the I, first time like, you see oh, him win wow, a fight. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I didn't. Think yeah, you definitely it's a didn't see victory. it. Yeah. You didn't see it coming that he was actually going to win a fight. That's for sure. Especially, yeah. yeah, versus Benny, who's like, I mean, it's not like it seems like an even match, you know. But Benny is also, uh, I don't know, he's a mob guy. You expect yeah. Benny to yeah. like to win this, and yeah. uh, and already, I think he expected it too. Him. That was the problem. He's too overconfident. Yeah, and mm-hmm. and he calls him what he he says to him while he's beating him up is pretty great. I have a clip. Piece of dog shit, little crazy motherfucking meatball dog shit. Like he calls him crazy motherfucking meatball dog shit, which um, <laughs> it's almost like he's doing uh, anti-Italian. Hey, that American sounds like spirits. one of your dishes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that sounds like ugh, it's one of your uh, food. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he gets him good. Of course, now Benny is out for revenge. Um, and uh, you know, well, Tony- and and Artie, uh, yeah. like Tony. You know, Tony lays down the piece and Tony, Tony lets everyone know what's up. And Artie says he'll play nice and everything. And then Artie just fucking overplays his yeah. hand. I so know. Tempting fate. Yeah. Uh, he already had him like he got to beat him up. Tony said, you don't have to. Uh, he got the business. He got he got the butts in the seats at the restaurant. Yes. Yes. Yeah. He, he told Benny, not only are you not going to take revenge on him. But you're also gonna have your parents' anniversary party at yeah. Vesuvio, which I think was That's, bad, bad bossing on Tony's part. There. I mean, for sure, I would say that you need I to would make them separate for a while. Uh, yeah, I would yeah. Get, give them both time to cool off. But you know, he's into like this, like you guys well, are gonna do this and be to- friends. That was also the scene where Tony does try to spread the gospel of therapy, which oh, I just yeah. Lo- yeah. like. I just love the idea of. Tony that, trying to get I wish I, some yeah. I wish a Tony was the one who got me to do therapy. Just, <laughs> yeah. So awesome. But it's it's great cuz it's like you can tell that Tony I mean even though he's probably the best of the choices available in terms of bosses but like the mm-hmm. key to resolving any conflict is to try and let each party like leave with their dignity uh mm-hmm. and instead of like making it an even sort of punishment where they can make up he's got to figure out a way uh to make them deferential to him like in all that right he's, right like right right so he's like shamed both of them and now neither of them uh, neither of them are leaving with their dignity because already has yeah. got to cook for this guy he doesn't like and this guy's got to eat uh at a at a restaurant he doesn't like yeah but but fucking Artie goes way too far his yeah. benny is sitting there with his parents and with his pregnant wife <laughs> and he decides uh, to do this. Benny, can I get you a martini? Excuse me? A martini. It's like a martini, but it's from Albania. <laughs> I never heard of that. Well, apparently they go down real easy. All right, Ben. We're going to look at the menu. A few moments later. In front of my wife. Just him putting his whole hand into the sauce, into boiling sauce, is like is the most Italian of revenges. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is. It is such an Italian version of revenge that uh, you know revenge is this best case, served sizzling. Exactly. Yeah, bubbling Re- on the stove. Exactly. Hot red-handed. <laughs> there you hey. go. <laughs> I did have some but, fun trivia about uh, the actor who plays Benny. Sure. Great. Uh, Max Casella. Uh, uh, he grew up in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and he ca- attended Cambridge Ringe. Apparently, it's Ringe and not Ridge. Cambridge Ringe and Latin School, where his classmates included Tracy Tracy Bingham, Ben Affleck, and Matt Damon. Mm. Max has pituitary dwarfism, which accounted for his ability to play characters much younger than his actual age. 
His, his brother also this. shares the condition. Due to his pituitary dwarfism, he didn't go through puberty until the age of 27 after medical intervention. His Holy physical shit. changes caused him to gain weight and he was dropped by his agents. He then had to completely re- reinvent himself as an actor. Wow. Damn. That's fucked up. Also, good for him, though, for yeah. like not, you know, for saying, fuck the agents. I want to go through puberty. I mean, you know, that's. <laughs> well, he was 27. I mean. No, I mean, that's what I'm saying. He's like, you know, he's like, I he, because I was wondering, I was like, this guy, I feel like I've seen him my whole life as a child. Yeah, See, and yeah. He, he, he shows up in shit. He shows up and shit. He looks like a kid. And I felt like he, even on The Sopranos, he like still kind of looked like a kid. I never wondered that about him, but I wondered that about Ralph Macchio because like mm. Ralph Ma- Macchio is 50 something and he still looks like a little kid. And if you watch like the original Karate Kid, he yeah. was actually older than uh, than blonde guy, uh, Billy Zabka. He was like 24 uh. or something in Karate Kid and he looks like he's 12. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I it, I feel like Ralph Macchio, though, like, I saw him age a little bit. Like, if you look at, like, like Karate Kid 3, like, his cheeks, re- that's when he starts yeah, getting, he's like, like, 30 into- by that point. Yeah, that's true. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Maybe, you know, bloated Macchio. Maybe he went through puberty late. Who knows? Yeah. But I, I do know that Benny... Um, has looked like a child forever, and that makes a lot of sense that he had. Yeah. They should start a band with like them and Andy Milanakis and. Yeah. Yeah. Forever young. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so um, he loses, you know, a big, uh, big layer of skin off of his hand, already does. Mm-hmm. And, um, and yeah, and then Tony tells him uh, to go to therapy. Uh, and to stop talking to the customers so much, it's which funny, is like it's great funny you made advice. the point about there not being a therapy episode or a therapy uh, session in this episode. Uh, but yeah. he does recommend. I feel like the recommendation of therapy comes off as like more genuine and helpful because we didn't see what the actual therapy looks like. Right, 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 right. I mean, but like, I, I think it's real though. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Well, it's it's and it, it's it's really fun because it's like. In this situation, Tony's Dr. Melfi and Artie's Tony. Right. And yeah, so, because yeah. like, and and what is Tony's great advice? It's like, you just got to do what you got to do to keep your dick up. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. That. Like, yeah. yeah. That's, and, I mean, that's basically what a lot of therapy is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, you go about in pity for yourself. And which is uh, something he keeps repeating over and over again, because while he was in the hospital recovering from a gunshot wound, someone put up a quote for that said you know basically pity, you go out uh, about in pity for yourself while a great wind lifts you into the sky mm-hmm. and he's so pissed at this quote because no one who's like in self-pity wants to be told they are to stop feeling sorry for themselves right mm-hmm. and um it affected him so much that he has decided it is a good psychological weapon to use on people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and he's, he's always That's like how he treats all self help is that it can eventually be used against his enemies somehow. Right. Yes. I mean, and that's kind of the entire thing with the Sopranos is that like his, his therapy is just another thing that he is weaponized against people. Uh, and uh, yeah, but I think he gives good advice because the truth of it is, is if there's one character on The Sopranos who might actually benefit from therapy, uh, it's Artie because he's not a sociopath. <laughs> he's just a sad sack. Just, yeah, bitter old fuck. He's a bitter old fuck. And I think therapy would do him good. Um, so now let's get into Chris's storyline just one of the greatest storylines in Sopranos mm. history. Uh, there's yeah. only a few scenes, but they are every scene is incredible. Um, Chris tells Tony that uh, he is going to be going on this trip to Cali with Lil Carmine uh, to go uh, to for a meeting with Ben Kingsley, Sir Ben. And, uh, and t- Tony makes it a point to make sure that uh, he calls Lil Carmine retarded. Which, uh, you know, well, which, which if look, if you are going to use the word yes. like that, that is the right 
great <laughs> place to use it. Carmine is that, that's another reason why I still why I chose this episode. Little Carmine is one of my favorite, yes. favorite stupid characters <laughs> yeah. ever in the history of anything. He's fantastic. Well, because all of them are so like stupid. stupid mob guys, but he's like a he's like a fail son stupid mob guy. Yes, which yes. Like exactly. adds a layer of uh, <laughs> entitlement to all of his bullshit. Always, always trying to use big words and never getting them right. <laughs> never. never. Oh, it's so good. It's just <laughs> such. That's the other thing too about the show. And I know you guys talk about, but it's like it's just so fucking funny. It's yeah. It's it's, just a, yeah. it's, it's, it's a comedy. His, his it meeting is. with Ben Kingsley is so great because, and I feel like most corporate or entertainment pitch meetings go like that where someone is using a lot of words to say absolutely nothing at all where he's mm-hmm. like yes we can talk through all your specificities later and it's yeah like, yeah okay and yes ta- yeah <laughs> tailor the part to your specificities which is just a fancy way of saying we don't have a script yet to yeah. show you uh-huh. we can do um, what you want thank you yeah but like if you just are in the movie you could basically write it you know, it's like, yeah. also their pitch is so good. The ring meets the Godfather. I mean, <laughs> log line. that's a log line. Yeah. That is a log line. That right is there. a great log line. <laughs> and yeah, so they're, they're, they're in LA and um, they've set up this meeting and you, you, you're kind of wondering like, how the fuck did they get a meeting with Ben Kingsley? And it's clear that Jay, uh, that uh, Lil Carmine knows his agent because he got him out of some trouble uh, yep. in the florida keys and uh <laughs> so we good. open just our, a, a good like expository like gives you just yes. enough of whatever that situation was to invent uh yeah. the situation in your mind mm-hmm. and, and and they give you a little bit more without giving you anything uh where sir ben is on the phone with his agent asking why he has to be there and i have a clip of that i'm just asking jay well tell me again why am I meeting with these chaps? Oh, oh, bollocks, Jay. Uh, bollocks. Because <laughs> you, know, you know that what he's saying is like, I, I already told you what happened. Just You got to meet with them. But why? I, it, you're meeting because they have a great idea. I think these guys are going to be huge. And I just, you know, I think you're going to love the part that they have to. It's like, oh, it's so beautiful. It, like without hearing All Jay say anything. I, well, that was one thing I did like about this episode in general was like, like we saw the credit card thing and it was affecting like, you know, obviously the mobs doing mm-hmm. it. But then um, at one point that murmur guy goes to the like Orthodox Jewish yeah, right, business yeah. too. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, so everyone's corrupt. Ben Kingsley's corrupt. Hollywood's mm-hmm. corrupt. Like mm-hmm. it's yeah. just a great across the board. Like, yeah. Um, and you get you to can't, see. Can't get away from it. You get to see Murmur kind of like uh, being of service in two different ways. One for obviously the mafia collecting all of the credit card numbers, but also being of service to another addict in need, which is yes. I love. I love that he is like <laughs> his sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes. The yeah. fact that Murmur is Chris's AA sponsor is fantastic. It's um, the, oh, this whole- oh, yeah. Sorry. And when I was going to say was that one part when Murmur shows up to the door because chris like completely fell off the rails and Mm -hmm. you know haggling with the girl about how much it costs to do what and do blow and everything and then the next next day she's locked in the bathroom and whatever (laughs) and and murmur comes to the door and chris is just like holding a bottle of champagne and murmur's just like whoa and chris is like i gotta get my shit (laughs) (laughs) it's so great i was just gonna say like this episode sort of is like the perfect pre-financial crisis uh narrative because Mm -hmm. like everybody there's all this free credit rolling around everybody's Mm -hmm. got their own uh little grift going and like everyone's doing fraud to each other and just Mm -hmm. assuming that it's never gonna end where it's like yeah yeah yeah, you know we give away free watches and uh, at some point uh we profit it's like uh we steal these credit card numbers uh, mm-hmm. And someone will like to pay it off eventually, kind of thing. You it's gotta like, spend money to make <laughs> yeah, money, every, baby. <laughs> everybody is just like taking all this free cash sloshing around and spending yeah. it on their six hundred dollars shoes. And and there's no like I think there there's no like more apt allegory to how the mafia works than Hollywood because of the mm-hmm. fact that like everyone is like Hollywood and the mafia. It's a bunch of fucking deer ticks that got together. <laughs> 
and there's no more fucking deer and they're like fuck it we'll make our own deer you know and yeah. like like the everyone's just sucking off of everyone else everyone's spending money they don't have everyone is like uh you know being funded somehow well, yeah the whole thing runs on convincing people that they're going to be the one who makes yes. money on what is inherently a bad investment which is right making movies which like you know you're only going to you're going to get one hit for every 15 movies that you make right. so it's just yeah. straightforwardly like a, a way for rich people to lose money um yeah but yeah and getting getting made is like getting signed to an agency <laughs> yeah right <laughs> and like you like there's your first couple of years you're doing everything for exposure you're not right. actually like right seeing the the, the wealth yeah yeah right like and Same the things thing. that you have to do in order to get to that upper echelon are just um not good you know soul, like, soul crushing soul crushing <laughs> so it's like yeah it, it it makes total sense for fucking you know the mafia and hollywood to to get together but i i just i love watching hollywood actors play versions of themselves like like ben kingsley in this episode plays such a cunt <laughs> and it's yeah. so it's so funny watching him put on the like he's trying to be polite to these guys yeah. and trying Just a to listen. mild like really media trained cunt but yeah yeah and i have a clip of them at that first meeting i heard this idea i called jay and i say sir ben kingsley no one else <laughs> well you know as ever it's script dependent oh we got a sensational writer jt dole i'm embarrassed i haven't heard of him <laughs> He's from TV, uh, Nash Bridges, Hooperman, Law and Order, the SUV. Betty, <laughs> it's Ben. How are you? What on earth are you doing out here? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just, mm, so I, I don't know. It's, oh, I love it so much. He's just... He's so cunty to them, but he's like doing it in the sweetest way possible, you know? I haven't heard of your writer you know, everything I do is script dependent and then just immediately gets distracted and sees Lauren Bacall. <laughs> um, I also love that he, uh, when Lauren Bacall like leaves, she's saying, oh, I've, I'm doing one of those award shows and they treat me right and blah, blah, blah. And then she has to go to her massage. And I think it's Lil Carmine whose last, or her, his parting words to her are, enjoy your success, which right. I, I feel like, uh, I don't know if that, if anyone wants to hear that, if you're a celebrity, but I feel like that is, I don't know. It's such, it's so funny. I actually, I was like, people should say that more. I, I, yeah. I agree completely. Yeah, it's a great. What, what else are you going to say? <laughs> bye bye. Like, what are you, how do you say bye to like a fucking, you know, an icon? You say, enjoy your success. Enjoy your success. Yeah. <laughs> So um, it's it's very much like you're gonna like the way you look, like yeah. You know. <laughs> so uh, so Ben Kingsley is then reminded, oh, that's right, I have an appointment over at the luxury lounge, and um, Chris and Lil Carmine follow him to it, and this is their and like. That's when that's when I was like Leo in that meme. I pointed out the screen because yeah. it said the name of the title. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> like, hey, but yeah, I, I mean, like fucking. This is for Chris, you know, like we said up top, this is like an eye opening, you know, experience where he's realizing like they're getting all this free shit. Everyone is treating, you know, Ben Kingsley like royalty. Um, in fact, at one point, he, I think he calls him just Kingsley and he goes, it's Sir Ben. Yeah, actually. <laughs> I mean, the way he just starts calling him Kingsley was great. Like they're old school buddies. Yeah. And uh, and of course, he can tell that like Chris is just amazed that all of this shit is free and uh is like trying to tell him hey you've got more tables you know to like what are you gonna just leave and he's like he's so used to it that he's like this guy i gotta give this guy something and so he gives him some sunglasses that he's just been wearing uh <laughs> and I, I thought like that was i uh, i mean that that was one of the more like cruel moments of of the episode in terms of like Ben Kingsley his cameo being cunty is one thing but just being like takes here here have some sun literally this guy's getting all this free shit and he gives him sunglasses I don't know maybe that's just my yeah, personal thing it's so f I mean like when you're famous uh like the line between a shitty gift and a good one gets blurred because sure like if you're a family member gave you like a like their eight by ten headshot 
you'd be like, what the fuck is your problem? Why would I want a picture of you? But yeah. at a certain level of celebrity, people are genuinely like, oh my gosh, he gave me a picture of himself. Isn't that great? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Well, and speaking of the picture, the, the fucking picture that they get in the luxury lounge, Lil Carmine's face that he makes when like, he, they get in the frame it's just yeah. like oh my oh, god it's so funny. yeah the perfect like uh step and repeat uh yes, publicity yes. photo face that's so good like the way he just like drops everything to try and get in a picture with ben mm-hmm. kingsley because he knows that somehow like raises his clout because uh totally you know he's gonna put that as his twitter background now and because in, Ho- in yeah in hollywood that's all you have man it's like yeah. he knows exactly like this is all i have yeah. is is fucking the what celebrity i'm next look to, at me so. with this picture with troy duffy we're good friends like that, yeah you know. <laughs> He's just dumb enough that he might be a success. That's the great thing. That's (laughs) the thing I love about uh, Lil Carmine. So one thing I was curious about, like uh, when Ben Kingsley sees Lauren Bacall, he calls her Betty, which I guess I'm just looking this up now. Apparently that's her birth name. Oh, Mm, okay. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Betty Bacall is a much better name. Well, her name's Betty Joan Persky. Yeah. Mm. To Jude. (laughs) <laughs> Way too chewy for this town. Get up! Um, we don't have any Jews in Hollywood. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa! Not in my town. Um, yeah. Uh, L- Lauren Bacall's fucking cameo in this episode so, is so fucking so cool. awesome. Yeah, it's so awesome that she did it. Yeah, I mean, she's just like she she's able to like in such like a, a short period of time leave such a lasting impression on me because like her getting her gift basket stolen is one of the like so one great. of my most fond memories of the sopranos and, and not just stolen but they punched her in they the punched. face yeah <laughs> well because she was being a twat like she yeah. like she was holding like there's some mob guys that try to rob her and she's like you're not taking my gift bag yeah get the peon, fuck away peon, from peon. me she yeah. says Oh, she's so funny in this. Um, she's also yeah. the uh, spokesperson for Fancy Feast Coffee back then, which I forgot about, but I totally remember. Fancy right Feast now. Coffee? F- sorry, Fancy say? Feast Cat Food. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> I it was. She was the celebrity spokesperson for High Point Coffee and Fancy Feast Cat Food, and for some reason, uh, that makes more sense. Combined them when I was. Uh, yeah, that, remember, remember, remember back in two thousand six when we started giving cats coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Things got out of hand. Yeah. Oh man, that Starbucks craze really went crazy. <laughs> That's what um, caused the financial meltdown. Yeah. Um. I also like. There's these little bits of like. I don't know. Uh there's the tone that Ben Kingsley uses throughout every scene of his that is just so it, it's it's so perfect it's he's so Hollywood that uh it just resonates with me the moment when Chris calls him up on the phone to ask him if he can get him into the luxury lounge and he tells him oh well that's sort of my publicist thing mm-hmm. and I don't I don't see how my publicist can help you you know like <laughs> yeah like he absolutely yeah, that, could help him he absolutely that, that's, could that's like actor speak for it it is what it is yes. that's yeah yeah like, yeah i don't know how that can help you know, yeah yeah all these things that don't mean anything he has mm-hmm. a series of like slimy dodges where like this yes. is this i'm i i clearly the, the same way that Eskimos have 27 words for snow, like I'm Ben Kingsley and I have 27 ways to blow you off without uh, yeah. without saying <laughs> oh, so yes. directly. Uh, he, he, his first, his, he had one that was just like, hey, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, guys. Looks like I ate up all our time here. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that fucking tone. All the while... Like Chris is doing this thing where he's clearly like trying to strong arm Ben Kingsley and he's kind of like he's being very like, you know, mafia guy. Like he's treating Ben. He's trying to intimidate him. Yeah. yeah, He's treating Ben Kingsley like he's a degenerate gambler that they have to sort of talk down to and sort of strong arm Mm -hmm. into doing stuff. Um, and then, and then, like a scene later when Ben Kingsley passes on the movie, he acts like he's hurt or surprised that after like strong arming yes. this guy, that he would have the audacity to also turn down the movie. Like, of course, yeah. he's not going to do the movie with you now, you psycho. Yeah, uh, but it's it's interesting because there's this moment where um, Chrissy and Murmur are on the elevator with Ben Kingsley, and he's kind of like threatening him a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and 
basically being like it's unfair you know all the richest people in the world who don't need it get all this free shit and ben kingsley kind of mentions like you think this is bad you should see award shows which i'm not saying ben kingsley fucking set the wolves on lauren bacall but (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but there's part of me that's like I, I don't know it feels very sopranos where it's like someone uh says something trying to get you to like focus your attack on uh, on a bigger piece of you know the the pie you know yes so there's part of me that believes he's trying to get lauren bacall fucked up um but uh yeah so then they uh they go and they rob lauren bacall and i uh, have a clip of that Oh, well, I can take it from here. You sure? Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, okay. you're welcome. <laughs> Good night. Night. Get the fuck away from me! What are you doing? Oh. Somebody help us! Don't die! It's called Don't Move. Yes, an ambulance by Robinson's May. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> fucking up. Oh, just just a wonderful fucking cameo. Maybe the best cameo in television history. Well, I, I would say Wilmer Valderrama has a very good camera oh, cameo right. in this episode as well. Yeah. Yeah. Just Tim like just if you have to life. imagine one celebrity who's in the uh, luxury lounge taking pictures, it's definitely gonna mm-hmm. be Fez from that seventies show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wilmer Valderrama was weirdly famous, huh? Yeah. Well, there's Yo Mama too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. MTV yeah, oh, Snaps or whatever it was called. Yeah. Yeah, but like even getting that job, like he was like dating Lindsay Lohan at that point, wasn't he? It was he was he, he was like he was like the guy he was Pete Davidson before uh, yeah, Pete he was Davidson. Pete, yeah, yeah, he was yeah, the yeah. first Pete Davidson where everyone in the world was just like, Him? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I I mean, sure. I mean, maybe he's yeah, he's like proto Pete Davidson with a good dick energy and uh you know, and the great talent. We can all say he's, both of those people. He's still great, he's like working talented. regularly now. Like he's on some one of those shows that like your parents might watch that you've never seen, and he's been on it for like a decade, and is probably making like a hundred grand an episode or something. Downton Abbey. <laughs> no, he oh, yeah. is. <laughs> he's currently on. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Please, just the idea of Fez as Fez <laughs> on Dumb is so funny. He's been on NCIS since 2016, so he's been doing oh, that wow, show for five years. Uh, and Good he's for him. Also man. on NCIS New Orleans. Uh, Was yeah. he dating Mila Kunis as well? I know in the show. Sure. I feel like <laughs> I he know. was. Oh, maybe that's Ashton Kutcher who was also on the show. That makes more mm, sense. Yeah, yeah, they dated for sure. Yeah. Well, anyway, they still together. I don't know. I think they're married. Yeah, I think they're still yeah, together. Yeah. He dated um, Lindsay Lohan, Demi Lovato, Mandy Moore, Ashley Simpson. What the fuck? Damn. Yeah. Fez, getting it in. <laughs> Good for yeah. him, man. Enjoying uh, that freedom. Uh, that's right. <laughs> Fez stands for fucks everything, Zaddy. I'm. I'm <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, yeah, so she is robbed. Um, and then of course, you know, Chris shows up back in New Jersey and gives Tony a cut of the swag bag that he got. Um, oh, (laughs) there's also that great moment. I'm sorry. In the plane (laughs) where it turns out Ben Kingsley is also Mm -hmm. on the same returning flight (laughs) and he's just staring at Ben Kingsley, uh, through the through the seats yeah through the seats and and this happened fuck <laughs> <laughs> a two syllable fuck is always good. yeah two syllable <laughs> fuck um so chrissy is like giving tony like a cut and tony is shitting on all of the things uh first he gives him like oh this is like tickets to um to uh australia to be at this golf resort and he's like it looks like sarasota you know and <laughs> yeah. you know dissing an entire country yeah yeah exactly being like yeah you don't need to leave jersey or you know you don't need to leave florida at least um and then like uh gives him uh a watch that he looks at like it's trash and then um you know gives him a (laughs) a bag and he said that's for what did he say that was for a uh for a pocket dog yeah yeah. um and yeah it's at that point that tony tells him he wishes he had stayed and you know he could have prevented the hijinks between benny and Artie. and in that moment 
Chrissy says, not many guys have had to make the sacrifice that I've made. And Tony says, how many times are you going to play the Adriana card? Which might be <laughs> the most cold-blooded moment, I think, uh, between them that I've seen in a while. Because, uh, yeah, that's fucked up, dude. <laughs> Not cool, Tony. Not fucking cool. And then we end with the Italians back on the plane talking about, you know, the cheap watch that they got, you know, and the weak American dollar. And uh, I'm not really sure what we're supposed to take away from that other than like America is a dying empire. Yeah, I think but that's it seems the main like a, thing. <laughs> seems like a big theme for this episode. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of unavoidable in 2006. Yeah, yeah. yeah I guess so. Uh, and also, do you notice David Chase is sitting uh, across the aisle from the uh, the two Italian guys? Mm. Oh, no. I didn't. Yeah. Nice pull. Yeah, he gave himself a little cameo. Yeah, I mean, that's got to be a great honor if you're the guy, if you're Matt Wiener, you wrote Luxury Lounge, and David Chase is like, this is the one I want to be in, the one where fucking we meet Ben Kingsley <laughs> and Lauren McCall gets punched in the face. Uh, and that's the episode. Um, so, yeah. Uh, f- do we have a favorite, a least favorite, or a scene we didn't mention? Vince? Uh, or or Alan? Well, there was all the uh, the stuff where, where Artie kills the rabbit and then makes mm. his old, like, dad's rabbit recipe. Yeah, that's that like was how, cute. That's how they, I think that's how it actually ends. Yeah. So yeah, it kind yeah. of ends on, like, a nice, like, warm yeah, you know, he which got is his, kind of interesting that they gave that to Artie. Yeah, he got his cooking groove back. I, I actually really liked that scene just as like a food scene. Like it was a really nice, just straightforwardly nice scene. Um, yeah. And p- particularly I liked the rabbit scene just as a as a dude who like gardens now. Like as soon as I saw the rabbit in there, like eating his, uh, you got, arugula, his arugula, I was like, seeds. oh, I would shoot the fucking rabbit. And he definitely, yeah. and then he shoots the rabbit. And I was like, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he he kills the wabbit um yeah i think oh, yeah he is he does have elmer fudd energy for sure <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i uh i don't i don't think i have like a least favorite like this is one of those episodes that just moves quickly through every story and every scene i'm like you know it was hard not to pull clips from every scene of this episode it was just so it's perfect to me this is one of them perfect episodes um if i had an alternate title I would have called it star comma struck. Mm. So nice. You know, hey, nice. Uh, there nice. we go. Um, and if I had to give this episode a grade and you know, I, I do have to, um, because I've set that standard. Uh, I would, let me see. Yeah. I would give it a B plus Vince. What would you give this episode? Yep. B plus. Okay. All right. Alan, what would you give this episode if it, you had to give it a letter grade? I admit I must have been cheating off you guys because I'm giving it a B plus. B plus, uh, B yeah. plus is all around for luxury lounge, and an A plus for this episode of Pod Yourself a Gun. Alan Strickland Williams, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thanks all for having me. It's so fun. Yeah, where can people find you? Like on the internet or you know wherever. You can find me at Totally Alan everywhere. Totally and I'll Alan. Be, I'll be there. I'll be there waiting. At Totally <laughs> Alan. You can see him. Yeah, he'll just be sticking around right in front of his I'm, phone, waiting for you to follow, subscribe. Check him out on Instagram. Check him check him out on Twitter. Patreon.com slash fraudcast. The eight dollar tier or above gets you a shout out. Now, Vince, we have a few shout outs this week. Ooh. First and first and foremost. All right, uh, I got my nickname and shoes on. All right, good. Get your nickname and shoes. First, we got to start with um, our first hundred dollar patron, Kenley Bidwell, who's got the he's the one who's got like perfect uh, balls and mm-hmm, his mm-hmm. Uh, and his uh, fucking and he fucks good. So <laughs> tell me about what's a good name for uh, Kenley? Yeah, yeah. We call him Kenny Two Balls. Oh, because he got both of them. Mm hmm. <laughs> All right. Kenny Two Balls, two beautiful balls. Next, we have. The beautiful, the amazing, the hilarious, the smart, the funny, the gorgeous, the sexy, the genius, Erica Nord, $100 patron. Nord. What, what? Yeah, she's like Nordic. We're going to call her uh we're going to call her the, the Yeti. <laughs> yeah. She's a mythical beast from uh, the, the mythical snow. beast Yeti. 
Erica the Yeti Nord. Uh, next, we have David Adams. Yeah, we call this guy two times because he's got two first names. Love it. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> n- next, we got Englethorpe McGillicuddy. Oh, yeah, we call him Cuddy Sark. Cuddy Sark? That's right. Like the whiskey. Okay, Cuddy Sark. He likes, uh, he likes the scotch with a picture of a ship on it, you know. <laughs> yeah, who doesn't these days? Uh, next, we have Adam Lay. I think it's Lee. No? Or Lee? It could yeah. be Lee. I'm going to call him uh, Trevino because, you know, Lee Trevino. The, oh, yeah. yeah. Lee yeah, Trevino. Yeah, Lee Trevino. Yeah. All right. We'll call him Trevino. Two more. We have Nick Brianna. Ooh, Nick Brianna. That's kind of like, <laughs> we call him the Australian because uh, we're all always getting him confused with Eric Bana. All right. <laughs> and finally, Tyler Kirby. Uh, yeah, This uh, we call this guy Smash Bros because- you know of course yeah perfect yeah he's always playing he's always he's always yeah he's playing Smash up Bro, in the air kirby. and kicking people it. off yeah with, you yeah, know yeah, yeah. Like kirby he's does. always sucking me off i'm <laughs> sorry uh yeah. patreon.com slash broadcast please subscribe now eight dollar tier obviously uh gets you a shout out but five dollar tier is fine too you can listen to all of our bonus episodes where we talk about everything Frogcast at gmail.com for all your questions, comments, and concerns. Vince, what's the Google Voice number? 415-275-0030. All right, everyone. Thanks again so much for listening. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And until next time, don't stop believing. I am Another guitar solo. How many guitar solos have been in this song? There's too many. These guys are real punks. Is this the HBO or is that Lauren McCola? And is Vito HOMO? I thought it was the Soprano.
Hey everyone out there. Just wanted to wish you and your family good tidings for this holiday season with some of my friends, new and old. Pod yourself a merry little Christmas. May your pods be light. Lum now on your bum bums will be clean and tight. Yeah. Brought yourself a merry little Christmas. If you're straight or gay, from now on your trough will have slop, you piggy. Not know that melody, but yeah, okay. Through the years we all will stop together. If the fates allow, patreon.com slash broadcast subscribe now. A merry little broadcast now. Percy, money, flap, 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 flap. Yeah. Pod yourself a little bit of broadcast now. Just do it. Subscribe. Be a friend. <sighs> Fuck. Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah. Is this song still going? <laughs> oh, up a half step. Oh, shit. Through the years we all will brought together. And now I'm going to rap. <laughs> what a bitch, my. A merry little broadcast now. Merry little broadcast now, bitch. Sucking on my dick, eating in my shit, fucking on my clit. Uh. Ho, 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 ho! Merry Christmas! Blah, 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 blah. Save up to $750 on select Whirlpool and Maytag appliances at Lowe's. Get deals on top items like the Whirlpool Stainless Steel Kitchen Suite and Maytag Pet Pro Laundry Pair. Plus, get free delivery when you spend $396 or more and free installation on items $599 or more. Shop appliances for less at Lowe's. Comparing normal cycle with Pet Pro Filter and option to cycle using traditional agitator without Pet Pro Filter and option. Results will vary based on the fabric and type of pet hair. Exclusions apply. See Lowe's.com for details. Offer ends 3-1. With one of the best savings rates in America, banking with Capital One is the easiest decision in the history of decisions. Even easier than choosing Slash to be in your band. Next up for lead guitar. 
you're in. Cool. <laughs> yep, even easier than that. And with no fees or minimums on checking and savings accounts, is it even a decision? That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com slash bank for details. Capital One and a member FDIC.